okay the camera's steady and we're ready to go so i have been pushing off this video for way too long a lot of people have asked me um, more about my recruiting strategy that helped me get into the position i am um i'm in right now at microsoft but also with the offers i was able to receive um, from google as well as linkedin at&t nordstrom a few other companies as well but now today i finally sat down i'm in my cousin's room right now i'm visiting family but i'm a finally about to go through this um and just really go into what are the core four areas that i worked on to help me get my roles and i will be giving some free resources a lot of those links will be down below to help you in um, these different areas related to LinkedIn, your resume, cover letter, um, interview preparation, job search, all those things um, will be linked down below. It's all free. I just want to help people get to where they want to be and snag their dream jobs um, like I did. I want to go over what I worked on during that summer before coming into my senior year because I didn't have the ideal GPA that I wanted in comparison to my peers and just give you some tips on what I did to help me get to where I'm at and hopefully this might be able to help you. But all of these areas helped me get an offer from Microsoft, Google, and LinkedIn and marketing as well as sales roles. So the first one is your resume. I reconstructed my resume to follow the STAR method. Situation, task, action, result. Now, you might have heard of that. I feel like they also use the CAR method too. Um, I don't know what that stands for, <laughs> but I heard that's pretty popular too. So really using that to highlight what's your impact and all the bullet points. If your bullet point is just a short description, that's not good enough. And I give some examples in my resource pack below. It's free. You can look at that, but really go in. So let's say you worked at a fast food restaurant. Don't just say you took orders. How did you take orders? You communicated with 50 plus customers per shift. That just gives more details, but also go into, because you communicated with them, what was the impact? You reduced time in the drive through lanes, or you bettered the customer experience, the customer dining experience, things like that. You wanna just go a little bit deeper and show that you care on your resume, but you can also illustrate your impact in any environment that you're in. So I have tons of good examples, and I think I might make a video about writing resume bullet points, because I think there's a lot I can teach there and I was a resume writer for a small business so I learned a lot in that space too to help people get their jobs. But the next thing on your resume is stick to one page. If it's longer than one page and you have less than five years of experience, that's a no-no. You want to keep it to one page and usually you have your contact information, your education, experience. You want to have experience pretty close to the top because that's the most key information on your resume and then go into some of those extracurriculars and activities or leadership and activities that you're doing and then some skills and interests skills and interests are optional but um you never know you might make a connection with someone because of a cool skill or interest that you have um so really zone in on that maybe you're a finance major but you really like history put that on there. What type of history do you like? Or maybe you like to travel, where? European travel. Put those things on there because um, it might help you build a connection with the interviewer beforehand or it can be um, a conversation starter. And then another thing I just really push for is that your resume illustrates what you're doing. So please get involved on your campus. Even if you're not in school, get involved somewhere. Take some online courses for free. Google has some free certifications. Um, go volunteer somewhere. Is there a boys and girls club around? Um, a girls Inc. That's what I did. Um, get a job. It doesn't have to be a fancy job. Just go somewhere and build your skill set of working with others because collaboration is a huge skill we all need. So really try to get involved. Go find that job. Go find that volunteering opportunity. Go find spaces where you can learn um, and actually build yourself. So yeah that's what i have for resume again free guides below i hope you guys can use them if you have any questions i have a website where you can send me an email i love to help you out so cover letter a lot of people don't write their cover letter don't do that be the person that spends their time writing a cover letter so this should be one page two it's typically three paragraphs so the first one's like your introduction what's the position you're applying for how did you find it why are you applying for it? And you need a hook line on why you should be considered. 
So you don't want to repeat everything from your resume because then it's two copies of the same thing. You want to go a little bit deeper in explaining some of those key experiences on your resume, but also you can cover some experiences that might not have fit on your resume. Is there something else that you're doing that is applicable um, to this role that could really benefit you in getting the interview? So I would definitely say just further expand and talk about yourself and highlight additional skills that you have. So I have some samples of what that can look like down below and within those just really covering your core skill set your core experiences but also really showing why are you a good fit for the company why are you a candidate that they should consider that's the huge part so even if they don't read your cover letter still write it because you never know some people have made it to the final round and it was hard to pick a candidate and they went back and reviewed their cover letters that maybe they didn't read the first time go around so i really say go over that and yeah so i revamped a guide i got my sophomore year of college spruced it up a little bit and used a few things that i felt were necessary to make it pop all right so we went over resume we went over cover letter high level now we're gonna go into linkedin a lot of people make profiles and that's it it's just sitting there don't be that person guys please don't be that person keep your profile updated put your resume on there um, i mean a lot of them you can attach it as a file or media but there's just so much you can do with linkedin that people are not aware of so i want you guys to hop on there so first of all just create a strong profile really going over your experiences your skills your personality complete the about section there's plenty of room there i know everyone's not a writer but actually write about yourself show a little bit of your personality maybe display more of yourself that can help recruiters determine if you're a culture fit um, really go in there and leave your email in there as well or any contact information so if someone wants to connect with you for a job or even just a networking opportunity or a project they think that you might be a right fit for, put that in the about section. At the top, have a profile photo, a good one. Don't have too much in the background. Like this will be too distracting for a profile photo. Keep it blank. It's okay if you don't have a camera, just get a white background in someone's house or yours and take a good picture, but dress the part for the job as well. And then have a background photo. So maybe you're into technology, Put a picture of coding on there, or maybe you're a te you want to be a teacher. Put pictures of books um, as your background um, photo for behind your profile photo on LinkedIn. So it's called your header, your header photo. There we go. So make sure you do that and just go in and complete the rest of it. If you have your resume and cover letter done, the LinkedIn part will just be a bit easier, and you can go ahead and move that information into there. Um, but I always encourage people to add media on there. Are there is there a slide deck you created? Is there a video of you doing something? Pictures at specific events that maybe you helped out with, volunteered, spoke, anything like that. Put that on there because it's just illustrating more of who you are and it's telling more of your story. So definitely do that. So your profile is good to go. Okay, awesome. Start posting. So write about um, some of the things that you're doing. So yes, it is a social network. Yes, it's a little bit professional, but you can still show pieces of who you are and why you're a valuable candidate. That's the end goal, but also to help build your network. Maybe you're finding other people who have the same interests as you because of one post. So if you're reading a certain book, maybe put some key takeaways on there. Did you go to a cool virtual event um, that you learned about something at a summit? Write about that. Take a picture of yourself at your computer with some of your free swag you might have gotten from it um maybe you did a case competition at school maybe you're just having a hard day talk about that share that experience because a lot of people can relate to that and it can be a good story so get into some of those personal stories that are still professional so maybe you failed a class talk about that what did you do to combat it did you build a relationship with your ta did you study harder that second time around did you find a study group? So just talk about those things because it just continues to show more of what you can offer. But your personality is huge nowadays in recruiting and they want to know more beyond your GPA and the classes you take. They want to know, are you a culture fit? So do that so more professionals can find you and more recruiters will want you. And then the next thing for LinkedIn is connect with people. So 
Um, when you go to different profiles, you can search people at different companies, um, things like that. You can search hashtags for different posts and find people. But hop on there, connect with them. And usually when you connect, it asks you if you want to add a note. Always add a note. Introduce yourself. Say why you want to connect with them. And possibly set up some one-on-one -on -one calls. So maybe someone is a fashion stylist in Chicago or New York City. And that's what you dream to do. They're at your favorite company. Connect with them. Send a note and say, hey... I'm a senior at ABC College. I'm currently majoring in fashion merchandising. I would love to know more about your role and how you got to this role, how you got to this company or something like that. Thanks, Paige. Do those things because it can always help you. That's a connection that might help you or maybe you'll build a connection that can help others. So that's huge. And then, sorry guys. Um, you can join different LinkedIn groups as well. Those are awesome. They drop jobs in there. Um, they talk about different things. So you could join a social justice group on LinkedIn. You could join um, a group that is really deep into social responsibility for companies. There's tons of groups on there. And that's another great way for you to find other people um, who are doing things similar to you. So we did resume. We did cover letter. We talked about that LinkedIn profile. Now we're going to interview preparation. So those three things are helping you get to the interview. That is just the biggest part. And a lot of times people think they got the interview. Oh, I have the job now. No, that's not typically how it goes. You have to prepare for the interview. And I always push people, be over prepared. You don't want to be the person that's, hey, let's debate if we want Paige or Jeff to get this role. No. You want to be the person that they interview and they're like, okay, we're definitely hiring Paige for this role. Now let's continue to talk about the other candidates to see who's the next best fit for the other three open slots. You want to be at the top. That is immediate. Yes. So the first thing um, that I like to do just during this interview uh, preparation process, I always start early. So if the interview is next week on Wednesday, I'm starting today and it's Tuesday. I don't care because I don't like to rush. So sometimes you do get quick turnaround for interviews. Like, hey, can you interview in two days? And that's the only spot they have. Work with the time you have. But here's some of the steps that I like to take um, to be ready for that. And I definitely think that these questions can help you too as you get ready for your next interview that's coming up whether you know it or not. So the first one is, for me, why marketing? Why sales? Why fashion merchandising? Why engineering? Why mathematics? Why did you pick that? And have a really detailed explanation. Don't just say, yeah, I majored in this because I like clothes. No. Go deeper. I chose marketing because I like its diversity in the world. I can use marketing for different industries and it can impact people in different channels such as social media, face-to-face um, -face interactions. Like, Go a little bit deeper of why you chose it because the things that you're saying, they want to see if that's applicable for the role. Everything ties back to the role. Next is why that company? Why do you want to go there? Don't just say you want to go somewhere because they have good benefits. No, there's more to that. Um, do you feel like it's a place you can grow? How can you grow there? What other opportunities do they have that's going to be able to help you? Ooh, it's getting a little... Okay, the lighting was messing up a little bit there, but yeah, so why that company really go in depth? Don't just say you want good benefits. Actually dive deeper and determine what do they have there that's going to help you grow, but also why do you want to work there and what impact do you want to make on that team and also in that company just within your role that you might get. So next is what skills or experiences do you have that sat satisfies the requirements so look at that job description, go back. You should copy and paste it into a Google Doc from the day you apply so you can always refer back to it because sometimes they might take that job posting down. The job description is the key in the interview because you should be using some of that language when you're speaking to them but also in your cover letter. So go back and look, do they say you need to know how to use Excel or Tableau? Um, be able to work on a team, have a creative eye. Um, understand how to do public speaking. What do you have that aligns with that? But also, what do you not have and how do you make up for that? So let's say, hey, you're not the best in Excel. 
start taking a free Excel training. Start watching some Excel YouTube videos. Get more comfortable with it and tell them, hey, I saw this was on the job description. I started to take trainings for those and I feel more comfortable creating pivot tables and um, filtering data. So take the action to build that skill if you don't have it. But sometimes you don't have that skill. So for instance, I was able to get a few roles in sales. I don't have any sales experience, but I talked about other skills that align with the skills in a salesperson. So for instance, I'm good at collaborating on a team. I'm good at building relationships with clients. I had to do that um, at Nordstrom. I'm good at looking at data to figure out what's the next best steps in forming a recommendation for a client. Those are all things needed in sales that I've experienced in my past three internships as well as my courses. So we got a little deep there, we got a little deep there. The next is research the company and the industry. So what are, their product, what are their products and services? How is that helping society? What's the most recent information you've seen on their blog or social media? Go check that out. Um, how is the industry doing? So retail, it's a roller coaster sometimes. Sometimes they're kind of down low, sometimes they're high up. So go check that out. How is it doing? And where is the company slacking? A lot of times people don't want to talk about that. Be aware because you might have an interview question asking for, hey, if you could change something about our company, what would it be? You already have a plan. So how can they combat it? So example, company A is slow, connect, is slow to connect with the Gen Z. Now, you could develop a high level strategy for social media. So you know Gen Z is very active on platforms like Instagram because they like visuals or even Twitter, things like that. Develop a little strategy. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be super in depth because you don't work at that company, but just discuss more about what that company can do in that space and show you're ready to contribute to that team or any other team they might place you on. The next one is huge. Please do this. Set up informational interviews with people who already work there. That's the best thing I can tell you. Ask that person once you get the call. I usually say hit up about three to four people because everyone's not going to respond and that's okay. So ask them about the company culture. Is it cutthroat? Are they very mm, standoffish? Are they very comforting? Do they like to work in teams a lot? Is everyone siloed? Ask more about that. Learn more about the role responsibilities. So what are they doing? Hit up somebody in that role already or someone who's recently transitioned out of that role. What are they doing on a weekly basis? What skills do you need that aren't on the job description? Um, what do they like? What did they not like about the role? How was management? What was that relationship like? And then also ask for, hey, do you have some interview tips that I can use to prepare for this interview? They might give you some pointers. I've had interviews where people have told me, hey, be aware of this question. Hey, they might hit you with this. Make sure you understand this product. So um, definitely ask people for help. The next one is practice your interview questions out loud. I know, sounds a little weird, I know, but do it because it will help you. So get comfortable. You don't wanna sound like a robot, but you wanna have your main bullet points down to where you're comfortable just answering it because you know it inside and out. So I always say use the STAR method for this too. It's on your resume bullets, but you can also use it in interviews. Situation, task, action, result. So some questions you might get are, tell me about yourself. Tell me about a time you had to work on a team. Why do you wanna work for this company? When was a time you worked with data and formed a recommendation? And there's plenty more to practice, and I'm just gonna keep saying this again, there's a free guide below with a list of questions that can help you and some sample answers that I've used myself to help me get to where I'm at as well as some of my peers. So after you practice, the interview's coming up, and it's the day. Dress the part. What is the culture of the company? I know a lot of my friends who might be on the engineering side, they don't dress up as much. That's just normal for them. I know when I was at Nordstrom, I would wear a button up, but I didn't feel the need to wear a blazer. I could wear a leather jacket with it. I could dress down and be a little bit more casual, business casual. But I know at some other companies I was at when I was at the pharmaceutical, I was way more dressed up. So figure out what's the attire, but honestly, Unless they tell you, it's always best to just dress up anyway to show you are prepared and you want this role. It never hurts to overdress. 
So something else that I do that is not a common thing, um, but it definitely helped me out and I could feel that there was a connection when I did this. So that is bring physical thank you cards. Yes, they always tell you to email within 24 hours. Still do that just in case but bring physical thank you cards that you already filled out you might not know your interviewer that's okay you can still put context in there thank you for your time today i'm grateful for your consideration thank you for sharing these candid conversations today about the role i hope i was able to illustrate that i'm a good fit for this role put something in there don't just put two sentences either write a little paragraph um and put something in there because it just shows you care Showing you care about the role, being more intentional is the key. So, um, yes, that's what I did for almost every interview. And every time I did it, there was always a, a surprised face, but a smile. And it made me feel good because I know not that many other candidates did the same thing. So, yeah. Now, those are the four areas. Resume, cover letter, LinkedIn, and my specific interview preparation. All that's down below. So this is really all I had for the things I use to get my offers from Microsoft, Google, and LinkedIn within marketing and sales roles. I think I might be doing a few more videos um, in the career space to help you all out because I was a career coach at school. I loved it and I still continue to do it in my free time. But yeah, I hope this was super helpful. So if you are trying to get into the tech space, Keep pushing, keep trying, keep connecting with people. And remember, resume, cover letter, LinkedIn, interview preparation. And there's still tons of additional things you can be doing too to help you get out there, like building your portfolio. Um, there's so many other things you can be doing, but please just build up your personal brand, build up those experiences, and truly understand who you are, what you can bring, and why you're a valuable candidate. So I hope this was helpful. I guess I'll sign off now. This was super fun. I'm happy I hopped on here today and did this video. And I look forward to just sharing more information that can help you get the job, internship, whatever opportunity that you want because I believe it's all possible. Nothing is impossible. You can get there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but with patience and hard work, you can do it. So I will catch y'all later and be on the lookout for the next video because I'm going to get better at these. <laughs>